very, very simple ones, where the individual is met by something like the living dark or the loving nothingness, or there's a friendly voice, or there's a quick in and out of body experience. It doesn't matter what it is. And, it, and there are after effects. And it's the after effects that validate the experience, not the other way around. And in the early days, and you can understand why, in the early days, people were jumping on what we what we in research call the light show. They were jumping on the light show. This the scenario is what everybody's talking about, and and you know that's what got all the publicity. Um, that's what alerted the media and and thrilled the media, and and that's what all the books were about, and that's what everybody talked about. They weren't talking about the after effects. Now, Raymond Moody did talk about some of them. He's, he said that they, you know, you lose your fear of death. Um, you come back more charitable and kinder than you were before, very service-oriented. Um, those simple kinds of things. But he, he didn't say anything about anything else. And I'm sure the reason he didn't is because he probably didn't know. Well... The after effects were among the first things I recognized. And I realized that it was the after effects that were validating the experience. That from this experience, if the experience was intense enough, it would, it would engender a pattern of physiological and psychological after effects. And you could find this pattern in children. Toddlers, adults, seniors, didn't matter, Chinese, uh, people from Africa, people in the state of Texas, didn't matter. And it was those after effects and that pattern of after effects that I focused a lot of attention on. Um, you know, the experience itself, I found, you know, four, four patterns, four different types of near-death experiences and went on to do a lot of work with integrating the experiences and that kind of thing. Um, but realize that, um, that nobody knew me. I, I, you know, I'm just this woman from Idaho. Who am I? And, and I, I had all this information. How could I have gotten it? And I told everybody, but they didn't believe me. And I, it's just like I ran into a still wall. Were you depressed about it? Uh, I was depressed uh, in the beginning about, about my inability to handle my body and to bring my body back in a way that it was fully functional. I found that depressing. Is it William Reimer who helped you so much? Oh, Dr. Reimer. Yes. That, he, he saved me. He did. Dr. William Reimer, William G. Reimer. Ontario, Oregon, absolutely. He was a nature path. And I'd always gone to MDs. I didn't know anything about, you know, alternative healing. Um, he was a homeopath. He knew all these kind of stuff. Life cell analysis, kinesiology, iridology, you, you, know, you, uh, you name it. And he was proficient in it and probably had, was certified in it. Plus, he was psychic, and he was just fabulous. Um, so he was very, very helpful to me and made a big difference. When I actually began my research, which is about the, a little bit after my experiences, because it took a while to get my body in gear where I could even walk and tell the difference between left and right, you know, and see properly and hear properly. So it took a while to get the body repaired. But once I did and started researching, I was so passionate with what I was doing. I was so dedicated to what I was doing that nothing bothered me. You couldn't stop me. I knew what I was doing. I knew what I had to do. I knew what I was told to do by the voice like none other during my third near-death experience. That voice said, and I quote, test, revelation. You are to do the research. One book for each death. Books two and three 
were named, not book one. I was shown what was to be in each book, but not how to do it or how long it would take me. The only reason I am alive is to do this work. And so I had that power, that presence, that strength with me. I had energy like a nuclear reactor. (laughs) People say, where did you get your energy? And I tell them from dying. And that's the truth. I got it from, from, from dying. In these three near-death experiences, was there an angelic presence? No, I missed all that stuff. You missed all that stuff? I, I, I missed the sense of angels. What I got instead was loved ones who died and gone on before me. I got that. Uh, Jesus. I was visited by Jesus. I got that. Um, but I was able to uh, see thoughts. I was able to um, understand and exercise creation itself. In my third one, I was able to witness creation itself, how it works, what it is, consciousness itself, what consciousness is. So mine were very deep in that way, beyond the normal kind of, you know, I was met by this angel and and the angel (laughs) told me to come back. I noticed that you also talked about the distinction, which I think is very important, between a life review versus reliving every thought, word, deed that has gone on. I, I, I got the big one. Can you share the context of that? Because a lot of people think you go through a life review when really you're reliving everything. Well, you can do both. Everybody's different. and Not everybody has a life review. I want to make that clear. Not everybody gets one. Those that do, for some, it can be like sitting in a movie theater and you're watching a screen go by with different parts of your life. For another one, she was watching bubbles go by, and in each bubble was a different part of her life. Another one entered this incredible building, and um, on the wall, on all these shelves up the wall, uh, were, were TV sets, and each one was tuned to a different part of her life, and she could enter any one she wanted and then relieve, relive that particular uh, part. Um, so for some of us, it was kind of like a review. But for me and a lot of others, it was a reliving. And for us that got the big one, it was the reliving of every thought you had ever thought. Every word you had ever spoken. Every deed you had ever done. Plus the effect of that on everyone that was ever in your environment, whether you met them or not, plus the effect of that on the soil, on the plants, on the animals, on the air. So you got the full, you got the full thing, the full gestalt. Now with some people, this this guy in Chicago, uh, it was in my research space, he had, uh, been with the mafia. I mean, really. And after his after his experience, he couldn't do that anymore. Couldn't kill anymore. And so when I met him, he he was was in this basement of this church, and he was helping uh, feed the homeless. And and so we talked about his near death experience, and in, in his he had to. Um, how do I say this? Become or enter the body, the mind, the spirit of each person and their families that he had ever hurt. And he he had to experience the effect of what he did to them from their angle. And it so traumatized him that he could never lie or steal or kill again. I mean, he just couldn't do it. Can you imagine Hitler's life review? (laughs) Uh, Well, you know, if he had one... (laughs) Or reliving. But you can imagine me going out doing my own work, and and finally, uh, my first book, Coming Back to Life, was published in 19, 